everyone, in this lecture, we're gonna be talking about the different types of outcomes to a statistical experiment, and we're gonna be talking about type one and type two errors. Now, with a statistical experiment, you typically have what's called a null hypothesis. And again, this is the thing that the scientific community currently believes in. Now, typically, the null hypothesis is true. And the scientific community got it right. But every once in a while, the scientific community gets it wrong. And you have a false null hypothesis. Now, it's impossible to determine which is which. And so we use statistical experiments to help guide us um, in the right direction. So when we do a statistical experiment, we either don't reject the null hypothesis or we reject the null hypothesis. Those are the two possibilities for an experiment. Now, sometimes experiments go wrong and you come out with anom anomalies that look like for example, you found the cure to cancer, or you found out that chocolate lo um, lowers weight, or it, it, it's a good diet to go on chocolate or something like that. I've seen different various fake news um, uh, posts on Facebook about that. So um, let's talk about the different types of scenarios here. For example, let's presuppose that the null hypothesis is true. Well, if the null hypothesis is true, then hopefully we don't reject it. Because if you reject it, that's bad. So hopefully your experiment would show that you should not reject it. That would be the correct decision to make. The other correct decision to make is if the null hypothesis is in fact false, hopefully you reject the null hypothesis. So those two are the correct decisions to make. But let's talk about type one and type two errors. Uh, if the null hypothesis is true, and you decide to reject the null hypothesis, then that's bad. You just made a mistake. But it's impossible to tell that you made a mistake because your statistical experiment says reject the null hypothesis. So in that case, you just have an anomaly, something that looks like you should reject the null hypothesis when in fact you shouldn't. This is called a type one error. Now, uh, the other type of error is if the null hypothesis is in fact false, but your experiment doesn't show that, then that is a type two error. Now, personally, I like type two errors a lot better than type one errors. And let me explain why. Typically, when the null hypothesis is false, but you don't reject it, that just means your experiment just wasn't good enough. Maybe you can make your experiment better. And that problem can be fixed really easily later down the road. What becomes a problem is, in my opinion, type one errors. When the null hypothesis is true and you instead decide to reject it. Most people don't verify hypotheses um, later on down the road. Once when someone says, nope, this is in fact the truth, people just kind of extend theories. They don't necessarily check the theories that, um, that are kind of the building blocks of science. And so this can cause some dangerous things to happen. For example, someone comes out and says, um, no, in fact, chocolate does cure cancer. Now, the null hypothesis is that chocolate doesn't cure cancer, right? That's what the scientific community would believe right now. And so to suggest that that's false, yikes, you're going to have some problems. However, with the type 2 error, this is the, when, for example, um, people decide, you know, uh, let me think an example of this. These are very rare. Um, I can't think of a null hypothesis that's false. Um, maybe let's say the Copenhagen model for uh, whether or not a light is a particle or a wave or both or whether or not we know what's going to happen with it. Um, right now, the null hypothesis might suggest that's false. Uh, if we conduct an experiment and it doesn't go right, and let's say the experiment fails, we decide not to reject the null hypothesis when in fact it's false. Then if that happens, well, science doesn't change. Science just stays the same. And that's kind of okay. I'm not, I'm not too sad about that. Um, and hopefully later down the road, someone conducts a better experiment that rejects this false uh, hypothesis. So it's really, to me, the type one error that becomes really problematic. Anyways, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture.